So over 400,000 people were infected with cryptosporidiosis in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 1993, whenever it passed through the water supply, according to Annual Review of Public Health. This was the biggest waterborne disease outbreak in U.S. history. Imagine if a person with harmful intentions inserted a biological or chemical agent into the water and it reached the population. Water would go to schools, businesses, homes, hospitals, and more. And because of this possibility and other disruption scenarios, the security of water treatment plants in the U.S. deserves attention. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. Hi everyone, my name is Joe Demas, and I will be discussing my research on to what extent the security vulnerabilities of water treatment plants pose a threat to U.S. national security. So, I will start off by providing some background and context as to why this is a national security threat. And then I've analyzed two policies that I'll go in depth a little bit about a little bit later and that have tried to actually secure water treatment facilities. So water infrastructure has been targeted globally in the past. Uh, as you can see by this bar graph here, uh, between 1998 and 2012, a lot of the attacks were concentrated and specifically in 2012 was a surge of attacks and that could indicate a, an increased interest in targeting water infrastructure, including the water treatment plants. And then so looking at the actors, like who, who wouldn't want to target water treatment plants? Well, I looked at terrorists, nation states, vandals, disgruntled past current employees, and hackers, but my research actually focused more on terrorist nation states and hackers. So I'll go more in depth about those three right now. So terrorist um, treatment plants would be an attractive target to terrorists because of the direct impact of the civilian population of a potential disruption or contamination attack. Um, the Tamil Tigers, for example, a, a terrorist group in Sri Lanka, they cut off the water supply of several uh, villages in the country um, in 2006, according to the Pacific Institute, and by preventing access to water, um, to these villages that angered the government, that's what they wanted. And um, that's just one example of a terrorist group going after water infrastructure. And nation states specifically um, are an increasing threat to the cybersecurity of water treatment plants compared to the physical security. Uh, taking, for example, Russia. Um, they've been no notorious for conducting cyber attacks against the United States. A DHS report actually suggests that um, Russia targeted the U.S. energy sector and other critical infrastructure uh, since at least 2016, and in general, hackers pose a large threat uh, to water treatment plants. And that brings me on to my next slide, the cybersecurity and attacks. Um, the supervisory control and data acquisition uh, and data acquisition systems, uh, the SCADA systems, are a vital portion of treatment operations. As they manage the security uh, monitoring systems, you can turn uh, pumps on and off, open and shut uh, valves, and since they can be online, this would be an attractive target for hackers or other malicious actors. Um, as talked about in the book, Cases of Intelligence Analysis, in 2012, um, there was a water treatment plant in Illinois. Um, there was a water pump that failed, um, and they tracked an IP address to Russia. Um, it turned out that there was an employee vacationing in Russia that got access to the system. Um, but the fact that you're able to access these systems remotely from really anywhere around the world is concerning as a malicious, malicious actor can do so if hacked into. Um, and actually the industrial control systems of critical infrastructure such as the SCADA systems uh, are aging and outdated. According to Oddflow Online, um, these systems are kept between 10 to 20 years without being replaced uh, or upgraded. And they tend not to be uh, updated or patched very often. I interviewed uh, the superintendent of a water treatment plant in Northeast Ohio, um, it's one of them where I visited, and they have not updated their SCADA system since 2008, so that's 11 years. Um, that can definitely provide some cybersecurity vulnerabilities um, that can be exploited by malicious actors, and there are certain instances actually where these systems are so out of date that patches and updates aren't even available to fix them, So, and that's concerning definitely. And it's evident that um, the water sector has been targeted by uh, some cyber attacks. 2015, there were 25 reported cyber attack incidents, and that was an 80% increase from 2014. And that doesn't account the many that are unreported, because a lot of them go unreported. And there was actually a group of researchers, part of the Georgia Institute of Technology, that made ransomware that was able to gain all access to a simulated water treatment plant, where they could control everything. They could display uh, false readings on the monitoring systems. They could open and close um, 
uh, shut and open valves, uh, turn pumps on and off, and more, which is that's, that's very concerning, the fact that they were able to do that. So looking at the potential uh, damage of contamination, I looked at a couple events. Uh, one of them I alluded to in my introduction in 1993, cryptosporidiosis um, was put into, or it got into the water supply of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, um, and infected over 400,000 people. And um, it costed the city $54 billion to fix. And then in 2000, E. coli got into the water supply of Walkerton, Ontario, and it costed the uh, city $155 million and also infected 2,300 residents, uh, which was about half as there was a, about 5,000 residents. And these events just demonstrate the public health and economic effects uh, that are detrimental um, of such an event. So then looking at um, past approaches, what has been tried to secure these facilities? After 9-11 specifically, critical infrastructure was a number one priority of um, the government and there was certain legislation passed. I looked at the Homeland Security Presidential Directive 9 of President Bush, basically just called on federal agencies to start working together to develop better um, surveillance and monitoring technology to um, detect certain contaminants. And that was in the food, agriculture, and water sectors. Um, but I noticed with this, the directive focused more on the food and agriculture sectors rather than the water sector. For example, it stated that the food and agriculture sectors should conduct vulnerability assessments um, every two years. But it didn't include the water sector, um, which I'm, I wasn't sure why, but then uh, I looked at the Public Health, Security, and Bioterrorism Preparedness and Response Act of 2002. Um, basically just uh, required emergency response plans and vulnerability assessments done um, at water distribution systems serving more than 3,300 people. So it left out the, uh, the plants that serve less than that amount of people. So looking at this pie graph here, um, you can see that a majority of the distribution systems in the country are smaller systems. Um, and because they weren't required to conduct vulnerability assessments, they could be more vulnerable to an attack. Um, I realized that the larger systems, if they were targeted, they could affect more people. Um, but this just provides malicious actors more opportunities to target these systems if they really uh, so chose to do so. Um, and the act didn't specify if water distribution systems should revisit the vulnerability assessment and emergency response plan that they made initially. And I feel like that's definitely a vulnerability because they need to look at their security extensively as threats um, get higher. And that, that uh, water treatment plant that I visited in Northeast Ohio um, I asked the superintendent about the vulnerability assessments. She said that they have not conducted one since just after 9-11, so that's over 15 years of not going back and extensively looking at uh, the security vulnerability of the plant, which is definitely a vulnerability. So overall, more must be done uh, for, uh, or, or in order for us to secure the water treatment plants in the future. And you know, actors, actors looking to wreak havoc and spread fear in society can do so by uh, targeting water treatment plants. Um, you know, there's evidence that water infrastructure has been targeted in the past and vulnerability to the security of these plants, then it's a major national security threat. Um, and so if these vulnerabilities are exploited, it could affect you know, thousands, possibly millions of Americans uh, being without water or being infected. So more efforts to increase this security should definitely be taken in the future.